Hello, I'm Campbell and welcome to Wind Up. Uh, today we are tasting Majestic's relatively new uh, definition range or three of their white wines. Uh, big fans of Majestic and the show, uh, as regulars will know, they're, they're very important as kind of like a, a, a gateway for a lot of people from supermarkets into smaller uh, independent uh, wine retailers. They also, uh, same group that owns uh, Naked Wines, who do great stuff for big Naked Wine subscribers here as well. Uh, and they also own uh, Lay & Wheeler at that sort of higher end uh, of the more specialised, more expensive retail market, but buy a lot of stuff from them too. Um, so they're, they're important guys, good guys. Um, Definition Range is their own label. Um, it's the kind of rung above their Majestic Loves, which have got the sort of very colourful labels. You know, we tried one of their Malbecs, which was very nice uh, quite recently. Um, this has all got the same kind of newsprint uh, style labeling, which is, uh, which is very pleasant, lends a sort of nice air of quality to it. Pretty much everything in the range is at the 11 or 12 pound retail, eight, nine, 10 pound on the, on the pick six mix um, discount. So it's kind of right in our, the, the middle of our kind of desired or ideal kind of, kind of sweet spot. So we've got three, uh, three whites to taste uh, here today. So first of all, we've got uh, this Albarino. Uh, Albarino is one of our faves uh, here uh, from Rius Baixas in the northwestern, uh, whichever side that is, uh, northwestern tip of, uh, of Spain in Galicia. Uh, very green, very lush Atlantic coasts. Um, and and we're, we're, we're big Albarino uh, drinkers here. So try that one first. There was, we had a taste of this earlier, it was a little bit sharp on the, uh, on the initial nose, but it's, it's kind of mellowed out a little bit now. Nice, nice fruitiness coming through. I mean, this is opening up um, a little bit since, since we first poured it. Um, this is interesting because I, I like it, but it's not massively albarino y to me. You know, it hasn't got that kind of that peachy, apricoty, more white, tropical kind of white and yellow fruits that I, I, I think of when I think Albarino. Citrus zest is there, but I think I'd, I'd probably mistake this for something else. Um, so I think on the, on the Wesometer, I, I'm going to give this one a six purely on the basis of at that price point, you know, 11, 11 odd pounds, nine, 10 on the discount. I think there are better Albarinos for the money and I think there's more typicity uh, for the money. I think it's a really nice wine. You know, I'm, I'm going to enjoy finishing the bottle, but I don't think it'll be um, top of my list to go back uh, next time I'm hitting uh, the definition range. But um, if you like Albarino, it's a little bit different. If you're looking for a different Albarino, I think I'd be quite tempted um, to give it a taste um, regardless. Okay, so on to, again, another uh, fave in Wind Up Towers is, uh, is Gavi. Um, proudly wearing its uh, DOCG top level sort of uh, accreditation or, le or you know, quality level in Italy. So it's from the Cortese grape and from the Piedmont region in uh, Northwest Italy. Um, love Gavi, um, normally more expensive than this. So we're very keen to see what this, this tastes like. Normally you see Gavi on a wine list and it's normally comfortably into the mid thirties, which would translate into a sort of 12, 13 uh, plus pound retail. So to get this uh, in single digits or sort of nine, 10 pounds, on the discount is very good value. Good Gavi nose. And then, yeah, this is really nice. Um, texturally, it's, it's very lovely. Um, it's smooth. Um, it says, interesting, it says almonds on the tasting notes and, and I completely agree. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a kind of very light nutty toastiness um, coming in there. Classic Gavi citrus profile, like most Italian wines, very food, uh, very food friendly, but quite happily, and drink it on its own on a on a summer's day. So this was we were kind of at seven on this one earlier, but after a bit of air, this is kind of nudged up to uh, to an eight. I'd uh, I'd quite happily buy this again. 
Um, I think especially getting the, uh, the, the, the six case discount, it's, it's really nice value for Gavi. You know, Gavi's never gonna be cheap. It's not a cheap region. Um, but yeah, I definitely happily uh, pick one up again. And the last one on my left, your right, is uh, Chenin Blanc. So Chenin's home is, uh, is Loire Valley. Um, but just like, uh, you know, Chardonnay has gone from France and found a home in uh, Australia, Sauvignon Blanc has come from also the Loire Valley and found its, its new world home in New Zealand. Uh, the Chenin Blanc grape has found its home in, or its, its Southern Hemisphere new world home in South Africa. Uh, for a while, there was some pretty, pretty average, pretty cheap, uh, drinkable but not great Shenan coming out of South Africa, certainly at the volume level. Um, but, but, but quality has been on a significant uh, upward trajectory for the last few years. Uh, some really, really nice uh, examples of, of, of the grape. Big fans. So this is from Stellenbosch, which to most people's mind is the, is the premier wine producing region in, uh, in SA. So give a sniff. It's definitely bigger. Uh, than, the, than the two old world wines, much more power on the nose. This one's a pound more expensive than the other two. Yeah, and again, that's, that's really nice. It's got, again, the white, the white fruits coming through there, little bit of peach, little bit of apple. Um, I think it's had a little bit of oak, it's just that kiss of vanilla, that kiss of sweetness in there. Um, it's not an oaky wine at all. So if you don't like oaky wines, don't worry about it. I would say that it's, it's used oak and it's probably, if I'm guessing, no more than 30% of the blend has seen any oak at all. So it's just a kiss, it's very nice. Um, really like that wine um, a lot too. Um, this, was, this was our favorite when we first tried it and I think uh, tried all three. And uh, it probably still is. Um, I'd, I'd definitely give this one an eight. Um, I'd probably even nudge it into a nine. You know, if you, I know a lot of people who, um, who, who really like Chenin Blanc and will buy a seven, eight pound bottle of Chenin Blanc. This is a nine if you like Chenin Blanc, as in go out and, uh, and pick this up because it's, it's, it's a clear turn up in the quality and the roundness and the richness and the power of the wine than what you'd normally expect from a sort of supermarket major label uh, Shannon producer. So, uh, so, so very good. So I think we're basically going six, eight and eight slash nine on these. Good efforts uh, from Majestic. Really good to see them working with good winemakers and bringing interesting wines at that sort of around, uh, around a tenner kind of price point, which is really solid everyday drinking for the, the British consumer or consumers anywhere else. Cheers.